Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas, the AMP TV studio, AAMP yes, TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all natural, dry aged USDA prime Angus and Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you taste their best in class of New York steaks, the filet mignon, of course, the king of all, the cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Hell, even those prime Wagyu and Angus burgers will be the best you've ever had. Likely, they're the best I've ever had. Check them out at uppercutchops.com. That's uppercutchops.com. Or give them a call, find out what's for dinner. 702 799 9935. 702 799 9935. Again, 702 799 9935 for uppercutchops.com. <clears throat> All right, a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast. Everybody also streaming on Facebook. We're running a certain stream just for our friends, just a couple of them on Facebook as well. Thanks for joining us. Also, everybody on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and Wild Cable Television and Hotel TV in about 600,000 rooms from coast to coast here in fabulous Las Vegas. And I'll tell you what, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Why? Because we can. Now, what we're able to do, well, let's face it, we have a lot of latitude, so we can do what we want to do here for the show so I brought in a longtime listener and friend of the sports circus and basketball foe on the field, or better yet, on the court, and that would be a guy by the name of Josh Acosta. Josh, thanks for joining us on today's show. Uh, thank you, Sal. All right, so what's the deal with that KU hat? What's that all about? <laughs> well, my family's from uh, Lawrence, Kansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, but like, you never go wrong with KU, man. No, KU's good stuff. I have no problem with KU. In fact, my last trip through Lawrence, Kansas was about a year or so ago. And yes, I stopped there. I stayed there in town. The people were very nice. And you know, it is almost the dead center of America. But nice people, good environment, good vibe. Everybody was cool. And I have to tell you, look, I mean, you know me, bro. I am a Duke guy, but I'm okay yeah. I'm okay with that KU hat. That's fine because at the end of the day, it's not really a competition because they're all trying to do what? Make it to the NBA for Christ's sakes, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, back in the day, it was always like uh, Bobby Hurley back in the day, but it, it is. I don't know, and, man. I, don't, uh, I, I mean, so. it goes so much further past Bobby. I mean, all the way. You know, in fact, uh, one of our correspondents for the show uh, from Duke from way back in the day is Mike Jaminski. And you've probably heard Mike on TV. He's been broadcasting for 30 years. Mike's a great guy. And we couldn't get Mike to join us today. But next time I see you show up with that KU hat, I'm going to ask Mike to join us. Mike hasn't been with us for a little bit. But you know what? He's a great analyst. And he really has a lot to offer. And I know wearing that KU hat, you have a lot to offer when it comes to the hoops world. Because it seems like if it's not hoops and sports, that's it for you. Right or wrong? Right. Okay. Yeah. You and I, like, how we met, like, we, we met on hoops. That's right. Playing we street played ball. Basketball. Right. Street ball. Over at, over at Blue Park in the city of Orange. So everybody in Southern California, you'll know this one. There's a really famous restaurant in Orange, the city of Orange in California. It's the greater L.A. market. It's called the Orange Hill Restaurant. No, I don't get any money for doing this. I'm just mentioning them as a point of reference. But behind there, so it's kind of like all flat. Then you go up the hill into this really there's nice a, hilly area pocket. and whatnot. Right? It's beautiful up there. And there's a park up there where all the jungle gyms and whatnot, they're all blue. Everybody called it Blue Park. And that's yeah. there's some great basketball games there. And that's where I met you 20 years ago, thereabouts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There go. That's a long time. What have you been doing for the last 20 years? <laughs> just live my life, man. <laughs> right, right. Like I, I still play ball, dude. Do you really? Uh, fitness, like just shooting hoops, like just going through the motions and just taking shots. It's it's an amazing thing, dude. Well, you know, Josh. The funny thing is, people say, "Well, I can't go to the park because I'm going to embarrass myself or whatever." My first day going to that park, I didn't know anybody there, and I lived right down the street from there. 
And right around the corner from uh, one of our friends in common, his name is Sherwin. So I live literally right around the corner from Sherwin, which who I didn't know at that time. I got to know everybody on the court. But the reality is you just go out there and you just do it. And look, I've always been a liability with the ball. I can't dribble to save my life. I never could, but I could defend. And I, could, and I got big hops, really big hops. Now I lost a bunch of weight. Chances are I could probably get up and over the rim now, if you know what I mean. <laughs> No, I could. I, yeah. In fact, I was able to dunk when I was 14. Huge hops. But now I lost like almost 50 pounds. I believe I'll have to try it again. I'll have to see if I can get up over the rim. Yeah, I remember that first day. Like, dude, you hurt me. <laughs> You're like a, a solid guy, man. You hit me. I'm like, ah. Oh. Well, I think I, I popped out a tooth or something, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if it yeah. was. If it was a I saw that fake too. Yeah, right? But that was it. it. But like anything else, folks, in case you think you can't get out and do something, because let's say you move to an area. And nowadays, Josh, people are moving around because the economy is really tight. They can't afford to live in this place. So they got to go to that place, whatever it is. But they mm. move and they relocate themselves only largely because they're forced to. And, you know, the poverty line in Southern California, and more particularly in Orange and L.A. County, if I'm not mistaken, you got to make about $150,000 to live a normal life oh, now. Is that about right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty rough, man. Like, it's just survival of the fittest, man. It really is. And so we think about... You getting out there or me getting out there or anybody, Josephine, Blosephine or Joe Blow, getting out there and doing something fun in the neighborhood. You've got to be outgoing and talking to people. And if you go out and let's say you want to play basketball in this particular case, I wanted to do something. So I said, you know, yeah. I'm going to get out and play. I don't know anybody. So I had to earn my way like everybody else. But mm -hmm. exercise those social skills. Get out yeah. there. All right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally miss it. So you like, hey, just it's not as easily like if I want to go like play pick up basketball with this guy, because I always have to watch out for this guy, or this other person. Like they, they, they want to like jack stuff from you. I just want to go out there and just play basketball, and they always want to hinder you and like hinder you in a sense of like when you start winning, they want to drag you down. But it's, it's very difficult when you just want to have fun. The minute you start having fun with everything, it's like they just want to bring you down. Right. They don't want you to rise up. They don't want you to rise above them because, like, hey, who is this guy? He just kind of showed up and now he's doing what? Yeah. It's kind of sad. But then again, this is what happens in the business world. It happens in professional sports. I know something about that. And look, at every level, it just gets worse. As money gets involved, it takes the fun out of playing the sport, generally speaking, because now it's a job, right? Once a dollar is involved, now that's your employer. And it's a really hard transition. And I remember that going all the way from grade school, all the way through high school and beyond. Every time you go up a level, the attitudes get bigger, the money gets bigger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Josh, when we when we see this on television for basketball, you're a big basketball guy. What is the biggest downer about watching hoops on TV today or even in person? If you go to maybe a Clippers game or a Lakers game or something like that there in Southern California. Well, you know, like it man, like back in the day, used to be like go for the affordability of it all. But it's just, uh, it's, it's a boring game. It's a boring game. And I could say this just from my own point of view in our last couple of minutes of the segment here. What I will say is going to an NBA game nowadays, we'll say even in the last 15 plus years, whatever, the game has almost become so uneventful because you know that they're going to make those threes. It is what it is. They need to move the line back. I move back to half court, whatever it is. How about a four point shot from half court? I'd like to see that. Yeah. But, but the reality is, I'll give you an example. I, the last basketball, last NBA game I went to, it was 
the it was the Pacers and somebody or another. It was the day before the national title game in Indianapolis with Duke against Butler back in about 2012. Okay. And so I went to the NBA game the day, the day before and it was so quiet in there and it was just business. It wasn't excitement. Going to an NCAA game is a different animal, especially in the tournament. The tournament is everything. In fact, oh, Josh, man. Josh, when we come back from break, we're going to go to break in a moment here. I want to talk a little bit about the difference between the NBA, the NCAA, and high school ball in comparison to what happens on the playground. Because there's a different dynamic going on there at different levels. Would you agree, yes or no? I totally agree. Absolutely. Okay. So I'll tell you what, folks, when we come back here from break, we're going to take care of a little business and be back here with our good friend, Josh Acosta from sunny Southern California. And you see an Orange County flag, everybody watching on TV right behind me. Yes. Representing the OC right here on the sports circus back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience <coughs> every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702 702- 799-9935 again 702-799-9935 or email us at info at the that's info at the drive your sales today by advertising with the sports circus could you use a little extra money right now if you'd like to borrow up to one hundred thousand dollars and get pre-approved in minutes call the number we'll give you at the end of this commercial our lending partners have already loaned millions of dollars to individuals just like you and we're ready to lend you up to one hundred thousand dollars if you qualify even even if your credit is not perfect, you could use the money to pay off high-interest credit cards for home renovations or consolidate existing debt. You can get flexible, easy-to-pay terms. A consultation to find out if you qualify is free. To find out if you qualify for our special financing program, call this toll-free number 24 hours a day. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. That's 800-335-1376. Important terms and conditions apply. Not all applicants will qualify. Loan amount, annual percentage rate, and term will vary depending on credit worthiness. Applying does not guarantee approval. Account approval is subject to verification and confirmation of your credit history and acceptance by a lender. If you choose to apply for a loan through us, a consumer report will be obtained to evaluate your credit worthiness in connection with your application for credit. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal.
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AA MP TV, right here in Las Vegas. This segment brought to you in part by our friends over at the American Business Trust Company, helping companies with strategy, sales and marketing, capital resources, and establishing companies with physical locations or on the internet. You decide. For more information, contact the American Business Trust Company at info at abtrustco.com. Info at abtrustco.com. That's the American Business Trust Company. Astounding round of applause for them and everybody else tuning in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, including our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500 KHKA. That's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome in everybody that's over in Southern California, maybe listening in over on NBC News and CNBC Financial, KCAA 106.5, 102.3 FM, 10.50 AM, right here in Las Vegas, KJPT Jackpot Radio and KVGK 97.9 FM over in Southwest Florida, WBGY. Yes, 90.3 FM. Thanks for joining us there. Also in Atlanta, WDJY 99.1 FM. WAUD, home of the Atlanta Braves throughout Alabama and all the way to Columbus, Georgia and everybody else in between. Thanks for joining us also on Cox Comcast Spectrum Frontier, Time Warner, Wild Cable TV and Hotel TV and everybody else that's on the Mars Rover. <laughs> all right, back here in Vegas talking with our friend over in Orange County, and that would be Josh Acosta. Josh, we're talking a little bit of basketball, and where we left off was the difference in going to the games. Never mind playing, the difference in your game experience to the NBA versus college. Not the tournament, let's just say your standard college game versus pro. What is your experience? What are your feelings of going to either one of them, and why is one better than the other one? Well, honestly, like with, with college basketball, these, these kids have their heart. Like they're doing it for the love. And the, the other kids, they're just doing it for the money. And I see the success that they want to do. But once they get into it, it just, it, it becomes all about the money and the politics. And especially with the, the kids in college, like they just want to get to the NBA, but it will never, the numbers are so small, but the main focus is that they should really focus on getting their education and further themselves. They want to succeed for their family and do everyone right. But once they actually get to the NBA, like they just, once they get to the NBA, they just don't know what to do with themselves. Like, it, 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 to me, it's like the same sports, like NFL, hockey, you get that big money. Let me ask you a question. Okay, let me ask you a question about that. It's actually a two-part question. The first part is what do we see? Now, Josh, people don't know this, but you're Native American. What do yeah. we see? We'll give a nice round of applause for that, of course. Yes! Go Native! All right, so the reality is <laughs> what, what we don't see are a lot of Native American athletes. And I talked to the people at, what the heck was it? Uh, the radio station at Four Corners, and it's uh, KTNN, the Navajo Nation, KTNN. So I talked to the people at KTNN. I said, you know, why don't we do a, a Native American segment? This way you can carry me on your programming over there in your traffic pattern, because they have a 50,000 watt blowtorch, big station over there at the four corners. And they said, you know what? We just want to stick with what we do. I'm like, but you're not bringing awareness. Josh, what has been done for the Native Americans in professional sports, specifically the Native Americans? Because buddy, I don't see it. What's going on? Nothing, there has been nothing. Actually, LeBron James actually tried to do a film on like hoopers and players and this and that, but there, there, there's been auditions for this and that, but I, I really, there's nothing been has done been done for it. Why is like, that? It, it, it's literally just this or that. Like, all my cousins are hoopers. Like, dude, my cousins were doing three sixties. They hit like they were short, shorter than than you and I. I'm, you're six one. I'm six foot. My cousin was six five foot. 
doing spud web type of stuff. You know, like what the hell happened to that guy? He, he just got lazy. Like okay, just, well, wait, Josh, let me ask you this. Do you believe that not enough attention is paid to Native American athletes and what could be done to bring the attention to them? I mean, what the hell? This is their land anyway, isn't it? Correct. Talk to me about that. Correct. I mean, I don't know, man. They're, a lot of them, they just live on the reservation and this is all they know. They just know this little pocket. They don't know the world. Do you so. think, Josh, do you think that the, the government and the system is trying to, in their own selfish way, to not try to advance the Native Americans in education and opportunities? It seems to me, and I'm just an outsider, but it seems to me that especially even the current administration doesn't do enough for the Native Americans. And it almost seems like they want to hold them down. And for whatever reason, I don't know. I'm not in the political circus, but I am in the sports circus, if you know what I mean. But the reality is, what I don't understand is why doesn't the government do something or even these candidates that are out there running for the highest office in the land? Why aren't they doing any more for the Native Americans than they're currently doing, if anything? It's only because they don't care. I, I feel as they, they really don't care. They don't really care. They don't know the people. You know, like they they talk up the game, but like they just don't care. Why don't they care? They're only about themselves. Okay. Okay. So their agenda, it says, you know what, Native Americans, you don't fit in our long term plans. Maybe we'll give you some casino land or something or another, whatever. But reality is that I don't see it. Now, one of my former, one of my friends is a former ABA player. So he played back with Cincinnati way back in the day. He's a big player in the Native American power game. So the big power plants, that's his thing. And we'll talk about that offline. So my friend Dave, his name is Dave Smoot. Check him out. So Dave has been trying to push that agenda and get the Native American visibility to be bigger and better. But it seems like, especially the current blue team initiatives don't have the Native Americans in their plans. And to me, that's troubling. It's gotta be really troubling for you, Josh. Yeah, it, it's very hurtful. But the way they, the, the way they go is the course of action and everything that's going on. I just don't understand like how the NBA doesn't understand that. And I think that when there was a film that LeBron James was going to do, and apparently he pulled a bug on it. And uh, that was kind of upsetting to me. Why would he pull the plug? That doesn't make sense because you could capture an audience that you typically wouldn't have, but it's also a great story amongst the people because the people say, you yes. know what? This guy who is not the most popular player in professional sports, a lot of people are not on board with what James is doing these days and the way he yeah. carries himself on the court, on the bench, whatever. It seems like his teammates tend to drift away from him instead of get drawn into him. Is that a fair yeah, assumption? But, like, but the, he, he claims himself the kid from Akron, Ohio. Like, he's from the hood. He's been from this. Like, but honestly, the the Native American res reservations, like, out in their situation. I mean, I was always a fan of LeBron. I still am. But it's been tough, you know. Like he put a bug on that film. Like he was doing a film about Native American ball players, like underappreciated players, like how much they're better than him. But. I don't know, like, is, is it a mossy thing or an ego trip? Like, is he always like trying to do whatever? So that's about it. I don't know if it's any of that, but look, people don't question his playing ability. I think people question his off the court behavior. And frankly, when he's not on the court, when I'm saying this guy's sitting on the bench, whatever, waiting, he's resting, whatever. 
it just seems as though people question that because he doesn't seem like the leader that a he could be because he could have been the the greatest thing that's happened to the game in a very very long time but he almost almost took himself out of that position because it was basically for his to take and he didn't take it all he did was become a player in a bigger game and i think politics has a lot to do with it unfortunately and i think that's terrible but then again people get tied up in stuff and they cause trouble and we saw that with a couple of other athletes to be nameless they just get themselves in the middle of something that they either a don't see a way out of it and it seems as though they damage the sport in which they play because they don't take a position, hold a position, and support the argument for their position with facts instead of just dogma. So it's like, well, I think it should be like this and that's it. There's more to it, folks. There's a lot more to it. In fact, when we come back from break, I want to get into more too about expansion for conferences and this and that. We can stick with basketball. That's fine. Back here on the Sports Circus in just a few minutes with our good friend Josh Acosta here in just a few moments right here on your favorite station. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a prime primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and All-Star Celebrity Guests for Chaos and Controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook, we all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS and press employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. Pay the IRS IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. The old way of living with diabetes is a pain. You've got to remember to do your testing and always need to stick your fingers to test your blood sugar. The new way to live your life with diabetes is with a continuous glucose monitor. Apply a discreet sensor on your body and it continuously monitors your glucose levels, helping you spend more time in range and freeing you from painful finger sticks. If you are living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you use insulin or have had hypoglycemic events, you might be eligible for a CGM through your insurance benefits. U.S. Med partners with over 500 private insurance companies and Medicare. We offer free shipping, 90-day supplies, and we bill your insurance. Call us today for a free benefits check. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. That's 800-659-7805. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Hey everybody, this is Barry Katz from the Industry Standard Podcast, and you're listening to the Sports Circus with Sal Tuzzolino. Ooh. 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AMP.TV. Stands for All Ages Media Programming, in case you're keeping score. Check them out at AAMP.TV, AAMP.TV. In fact, that's who this segment is brought to you by. Check them out at AMP TV. They can help you produce your very own talk show or podcast or whatever the heck it is that you want. Guess what? They can do it. Check them out, AAMP.TV. Info at AAMP.TV for more information as well. Nice impromptu, shameless plug for AMP TV. All right, welcome back to everybody. You know who you are on TV and radio and streaming and whatnot on the Mars Rover. We are back here with our good friend Josh Acosta from sunny Southern California from Orange County. Everybody can see me on TV. There's a, looks like it, my head's on fire, but it's actually, it's the Orange County flag. It's kind of cool. All right, so Josh, we were talking about Native Americans and sports and basketball in particular, talking about the difference between professional basketball and college basketball. And then you said, well, you know, those kids are trying to get to the next level, but a dollar is involved there too, because what do we have? We have the NIL money, all the NIL money, and now they're getting it in high school. Where does this end? I've heard of kids getting it in middle school these days. What do you think about all this crap? Dude, it's... I'm very much into music. I love music, but it's like, it's payola. It's like recruiting before, like, it's like getting the, the AAU programs and like stuff like that. I, I never really understood that, but like, you have this future in it and they like want to build, like they want to like, it's franchising. And it's like, it, it takes the love out of the game. Like, I seriously, like, I had coaches that I would take a bat for, a bullet for. But, like, when it comes to like, the money and this and that, like, I'm not going to do it. But it just, that's what it comes to. This is what sports has become. The NBA, like, the, the NFL every single step of the way it's disgusting in my opinion like like it, it's just right there but if the kid is totally talented and good for it and just plays well like it is what it is that's what it is you know like Josh, yeah. what I don't understand in this grand scheme of things, look, I, I understand the money flow. I understand the sponsorships. But we're in the sponsorship business ourselves over here. That's what we do. We put on good programming over television, radio outlets. And this segment is brought to you by this one, that one, or the other one, whatever the case, right? Upper Cup Chops, the top of the show advertiser or top of the show, uh, top of the show sponsor for the sports circus. Of course, a nice round of applause for them for their incredible prime Wagyu and Angus Steaks and Chops. Right? We can't forget that. But reality is the shoe companies, the car companies, whatever, they want to get to the consumer at the youngest possible age. Now, here's an interesting thing. So one of my friends, this was like a, I went one time uh, many years ago to a, was it a Wednesday midweek wedding in the middle of Los Angeles, which was to me, it was a little bit strange because I've only gone to weddings on Saturdays. You know, right? On a Wednesday? Yeah, on a Wednesday. Imagine that. And it happened. Who is made on Wednesday? I don't know, buddy. But it, it happens that the my good friend who married somebody on the California State Board of Education, she said, look, we have to do this on this particular date because we have meetings or whatnot that we can't get away from. I'm thinking, well, geez, what are you doing on the weekend? The fact is this. They said to me, because I, I asked her about something very specific about when it comes to education for kids. And I said, what about the idea of teaching X, Y, and Z to the kids? She goes, no, no, no. We've got to get to the kids before they get to kindergarten so we could get this into their heads. Basically brainwashing these kids from day one. Now, you know, you're a product of the California state school system, right? And I went to community college in the state of California. I went to a state school, whatever. I don't know this one. But the reality is this. The brainwashing whether it's consumerism, whether it is whatever you call it, 
This happens at such a young age. So they're giving NIL money to young kids and influencing young kids into buying brands, whether it's shoes or their parents for a car or whatever the hell it is for clothing. Josh, we're going to see this all the way down into K through six at some point, right? Some kid turned out to be, he's in fifth grade. He's already like six foot four. Let's give this kid a shoe contract. Where does it end? I mean, does it go all the way down to first grade? No, I don't believe so. I mean, like, it has to be a, a good foundation of family. Just because, like, you're six or four, like, does it mean, like, you play that sport? Or are you, like, this or that? You, you have to have an intelligent mind. You know, like, there's so many different avenues and way that you go. You know, like, there's these kids are so like not misguided, but they're they're just not say lost, but they're they're finding their way, and they will find their way. But Josh, they've been manipulated at such a young age, and the crazy part about it is the parents are just as guilty as the kids. I mean, the kids they only know what their parents teach them. So yes, for correct. the last, you're absolutely correct, dude. Dude, you're correct. Dude. Like, dude, I grew up in this this community. And, you know, for the longest time, they always thought I was black. And I'm, but I'm not black. I'm Native American Puerto Rican. You know, like, I, I'm more Native American than anything. But they didn't know what Native American was to, to these, I say, white people. They don't know what Native American is. I feel like more than uh, Mexicans and Asians, like, I was a minority. But I learned how to spell and speak English. Like, so I learned how to use my brain. But my athleticism sucked. I knew I was subpar. I was here. But I didn't excel at that part. So I knew where I was at. But, like, it just, it, I was an anomaly to them. But to the others, they just, they were just, like, hood. And I grew up around hood people, and I grew up around rich people. Like, there's a counterbalance to it all. But, yeah, like, with sports, it, it's, a, it's a very vindictive thing. You know, like, these kids want to get have these high hopes to it. Like, you know, their parents would really want to push them to, like, get to the NBA, get to the NFL, do this, get me up the hood, you know. You're my retirement fund. But it, that's a lot of pressure to a kid. It is. Uh, hold that thought. Hold, hold that thought because I grew up with that as well. And look, you're a minority guy. Look, my family is what? We are what? Come on, Josh. We talked about this earlier today. Italian. Right. And we are the original Latinos, right? Yes. So right. people say, well, you're not minority. Like hell, I'm not. Apparently, you forgot to go to school on that particular day when they were teaching these kind of things. But reality is just because I can speak different languages doesn't mean that I'm any more minority or less minority than the next person. The reality is people seem to forget who they're talking to and they don't remember the things that maybe or maybe not they were taught in school. And now that also means sportsmanship. That means treating people with respect whether you're playing uh, yeah. sports or in the business world. You know this one as well. Take one minute, talk about it in the business world, how you've been discriminated against. Bro, like, they, they are not, like, teaching anything to these kids. Nothing, like, Native Americans, they're not teaching this stuff to these kids anymore. We're extinct. We're like dinosaurs, bro. That's basically it. How have you been That's treated in the workplace, Josh? Oh, discrimination, yeah, because I have the Hispanic last name and I don't speak Spanish. How did that affect you at your job? Because you did not speak Spanish. I, I just don't fit in. I was never, uh, I was never fit in there. It's because they look at you, they say, oh, he's got to be some kind of minority, whatever. He's got the name, maybe whatever, whatever. But they don't think past their narrow-minded thoughts like, hey, you know what? 
Maybe he's not a, a native Spanish speaker. Maybe he's not a native whatever speaker. Oh, by the way, he's Native American. Did you know that? And there are umpteen languages within the Native American world on top of it. Josh, it's got to be very confusing. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Okay. So. Well, I'll tell you what. When we come back, I want to I take some of this, and I'm going to talk a little bit of Pac-12, Big Ten, Big 12, how it relates to basketball, football, education as well, because there's so much that goes on here. Folks, listen, this is a sports and entertainment show, but sometimes we'll bring on people that we've known for a long time because they give you a perspective that you typically don't get or you don't hear because people are too damn scared to talk about it on air. Well, guess what? Not on the sports circus because guess what? We talk about things that other people are too scared to talk about. We're going to continue on with this with our good friend Josh Acosta here on the sports circus. Lots more to come. Last segment. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. My favorite one had to do with the Green Bay Packers. And I love the fact that they dealt off Ty Montgomery because of a blown assignment. Green Bay isn't Green Bay unless they have a good running game. Then they can win 10 Super Bowls. The fact is, you don't have a running game. You've got 70% passing. And that's not where Aaron Rodgers needs to be. He needs to be in a position where he's got a running game to offset the passing game and so forth. I like the move. Green Bay didn't have a running game anyway. So all they're doing is saying, we're going to get rid of you because you don't follow instructions. Well, he made one of the most boneheaded plays I've ever seen. There's two minutes and five seconds on the clock. They traded him they on Tuesday. They should have cut him on Sunday he night. He should have been on the plane back to Green Bay. Right, they should have made him walk back yeah, to Green Bay. No, it was a terrible play. Now, he's not a stupid guy. He went to Stanford. Really? He's not a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy, but he doesn't he, follow instructions. He made a terrible play. The fact is he didn't follow instructions. And you say he's not a dumb guy. His own agenda he put ahead of his team. I agree. Thus, he is a dumb guy, right or wrong? Wrong. He just got selfish. He, you're not going to convince me that a guy from Stanford is a dumb dumb. No! <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Sidney Justin from the Miracles. So you heard yesterday's show at Roy Firestone. You think you hear a little clip about him going into the office where Smokey was at? And that was really good material, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really funny, man. Yeah, and then you heard him. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was cool, though. It was cool. Really cool story, man. I, I enjoyed listening to that. Right, and then he gave a little bit of a couple of bars. Can you give us a couple of more from Ooh Baby Baby? And let's see if you could do it better than Roy Firestone. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you know what? Why not? Uh... I did you wrong, my heart went out to play, but in the game I lost you, what a price to pay, hey, I'm crying, ooh, baby, baby. How's that, man? Is that okay? Is that good enough? That's incredible. That's fantastic. You know why? Because that's what you do. You're in the incredible business, Sid. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Only at the sports circus. You're going to get sports? You get music? Hey, this is Tommy John, and you're listening to the sports circus. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AMP TV. Folks, make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are our podcasts on all your favorite podcast platforms, whether it's Apple, iHeart, Spotify, Google, Audible. I don't know. What else is out there? There's a bunch of them, nonetheless. Make sure that you just listen to us over there. Lots of great shows, great content. And listen, we don't fix anything. Whatever's out there, it's out there. We just don't say the bad words, right? You can't do that one. But reality is, it's good content. You'll laugh with us. You'll laugh at us. It doesn't really matter. Maybe you might cry. Who the hell knows? Like peeling an onion. I don't know. In any event, make sure you check out also the Partners page. One of our partners been with us since the very beginning is the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Check about us at CSNCoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. That's CSNCoyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Yes! All right, welcome back to everybody. You know who you are. Everybody on TV, radio, on our Cox Comcast Spectrum Frontier, Time Warner, and Wild Cable Television affiliates, CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports, and affiliates on radio, independence, that is, from coast to coast, plus hotel TV in over 600,000 rooms. Back here with our good friend Josh Acosta in sunny Southern California. So, Josh, listen, you're a basketball guy. You love basketball. It's like you live for basketball. We, we talk about sports that don't belong or things that belong on the four-letter network. And that would be E, S, P, and N, right? We don't really talk much about those because they cover things like cornhole, you know, throwing beanbags through wooden holes and crap like that. Just crazy stuff. I don't know. But let's stick with basketball here. And we've got a story. It's reported by multiple sources. And I'm going to I have to go through this one real quick, and then I want to talk to you about it because this deals directly with the Big Ten and expansion and possibly pulling more teams from the Pac-12. This is interesting. So now the Big Ten has discussed a plan to expand to 20 teams, basically a super conference, but sources indicate an 18-school league would be more likely at the outset, leaving out Cal and Stanford. What? We're going to get to that. Yes, hold on. Now, as the Big Ten continues to wait and see what happens with the future of the Pac-12 Conference, the league's focus on possible expansion has narrowed to adding just two schools, Oregon and Washington, according to industry sources, while a plan also to add Cal and Stanford and move to 20 teams in 2024 has been discussed. A smaller two-team expansion that broadcast partners favor seems to be a little bit more likely. I believe Cal and Stanford will follow. Nonetheless, a subgroup of the Big Ten presidents are exploring expansion possibilities, but only in the case that the Pac-12 actually falls apart, which it seems doomed to anyway. Now, of course, that will be likely be determined by the actions of the University of Arizona down in Tucson, which is weighing a decision on whether to leave the Pac-12 for the Big 12. Now, Arizona Board of Governors, the Board of Regents, have scheduled a meeting to discuss it. And of course, the same board also oversees Arizona State University. Now, if Arizona chooses to stay with the Pac-12 and it stabilizes, then the Big Ten is likely to stand down and remain at 16 teams through 2024. However, if Arizona were to depart and the Big 12 is able to bring Arizona State also and or Utah, possibly something like that, well, or even Washington State, Putting the Pac-12 in a bad spot, it would do, then the Big Ten would likely make a move. Now, in the case, the Big Ten likely would be willing to offer membership to Oregon and Washington, albeit at a discounted share of league revenues, possibly as low as 50% for a few years. Now, last year, the Big Ten agreed to a seven-year, $8 billion media rights deal with CBS, Fox, and NBC. Of course, we're on those affiliates too. Now, along with the league's Big Ten network, each league member is expected to receive between 50 million and 65 million per year alone. Of course, the number is going to climb too. Even at a discount, Oregon and Washington would be equal or maybe even exceeding what they'd get with the proposed Pac-12 media deal. So it's a big win for them. Eventually, the two schools would become full share members. Now, the Big Ten broadcast partners see value in adding Oregon and Washington, but have kind of stalled at moving 
to 20 teams and bring it in Cal and Stanford. Not really sure why. I'll get to that in a moment. Now, the two Bay Area schools offered appeal to the university presidents who like the association with elite institutions and entry into the populous, wealthy, and tech company rich region of the country. Now, that appears to be a back burner decision. Now, in the meantime, all eyes and the fate of the Pac 12 remain on Arizona. So, why are we talking about this, Josh? Let's think of Pac 12 basketball, one of the better conferences, okay. historically, no, like, one of the better conferences. So, How does that no, affect you, the viewer, Josh? No, it, it pisses me off because they always see USC, UCLA, KU, Kentucky, these certain teams that are so proficient. But now they want to, like, not so much dilute it, but they want to integrate to it all. At the end of the day, dude, it comes down to this. And I, I hate to say it. It always comes down to it. It's always but money. It, it, who is the better athlete? Who wants it more? But the athlete in this case doesn't matter, Josh. It's all about the almighty dollar because the TV contracts, you could have empty stadiums. It doesn't matter. They don't need the gate money. What they need are the TV contracts because the TV contracts yeah. come with what? Sponsorship money. And that's what it all yes. comes down to. Show me the money! Right? Yeah. Correct. It's all money. How does that affect well, you? It, it, Josh, how does it, it affect it, you, the viewer he, of Pac-12 basketball? Viewer, me as a viewer, if my child is growing up in this sport, if he wants to be a soccer player, basketball player, like whatever he, want, he or she wants to be, I want them to be the best at it, but I want them to excel, but I don't want them to be hindered by holding them back because – Oh, because I want to wear this Nike or Adidas or this and that because I'm not like this or that. Discrimination. Play. Be the best you can. But just do the best you can on it. And honestly, like, it, it's just such a hinder. It, it, it's awful. Like, it, I don't know. Well, look, it's frustrating for the viewer. So I'm on the West Coast. I, I grew up, I'm a Big Ten guy for undergrad. Uh, I'm an ACC guy for graduate school. But the reality is, once you start tearing apart the very fiber of these conferences as they're regionalized, I mean, look, the Big Ten now goes literally from New York to L.A. or from New Jersey to L.A. It's ridiculous. It's There's huge. no regional aspect to it whatsoever. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's worldwide. Think about this. What if maybe one of your favorite schools you like to watch? Who do you like to watch on the West Coast? We already know you're a big KU guy. But what if KU now has regular games in the Big 12 with, oh, I don't know, Arizona, right? A perennial power school. Oh, How are you going to feel about that? Oh, man, it would be amazing. I, I would drive out there. Just to watch the game. Okay. So you but would like, be a fan of KU playing Arizona. So if Arizona went into the Big 12, that's a good thing for you. Yeah. I, I, Allen Fieldhouse, I'd be right there, dude. Like, like, oh, man. It'd be, like, amazing. But stepping field, stepping into that Kansas University, oh, man, it just has so much legacy, man. Like, so you're just, in favor of the idea, yeah. right? Okay, what about what about other sports? I know you don't watch the other sports in our last couple of minutes of the show here. What about the fans from the other sports? So, for example, let's just say we saw an annual game, hypothetically, between Washington and Washington State, the Apple Cup, right? Something like that. And so what if Washington leaves... And let's just say, hypothetically, Washington State doesn't compete enough and that rivalry goes away. What if KU can't play K-State anymore, hypothetically? Yeah, exactly. How would you feel about KU, that? No, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it, I wouldn't feel like that because that, that's what made them. That's what made them. So they're tearing apart the fibers of these, of these rivalries exactly. as well. Yeah, 
That's how I feel. I feel as if they are infringing upon what the fans want because the almighty dollar is everything. But without the fans, what do they really have? Because if the fans stop watching on TV, the sponsor money is pulled from the sponsors. It goes away. Right? It and now what do you got? It's meaningless. There's nothing there. So the lesson learned with all of this, Josh, is look, without the fans, we don't have professional sports. I mean, they could play to an empty stadium and to an empty TV set because nobody's watching the TV set. Empty streamers on your on your telephones and notepads and crap like that. End of day, without the fans, these sports cannot survive. Yeah, so you're right. No. Tragic as it seems. So Josh, listen, you've got one minute to mention anything you want to your friends, your family, whoever, whatever. I don't care. Keep it clean. Go ahead. Well, Sal, so thank you for having your show. I appreciate it, brother. And uh, that's about it, man. Like, I miss you, man. Hope to see you soon. And Marty Soul's here. She's keeping quiet. But... Oh, that's right. We saw her. Hey, let's see if we could get her on, on camera real quick. Go ahead. Let her, let her wave hello. Yeah. I saw. Hey, hello. I'm coming. <laughs> where is she? Where is she? All right. Here. There you are. Okay. All right. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. All right. Well, it's great having you two on. And wow, listen, thank you. Josh, we will be talking about other stuff. I'm going to bring you back. And I want to. I want to spend more time on Native American topics because that's a real hot button of mine. Having friends, of course, like yourself and my friend Dave and others. And my friend Ben also, all from you know different tribal communities, but they just don't have a voice, and it's one hundred percent wrong. So we're going to try to solve that problem. Who knows, Josh? You may be doing a segment, a Native American segment here on the Sports Circus. I have no idea, but we'll try to figure something out for you. Of course, that always deserves a nice round of applause. Final words? Anything on your mind? Ah, well, thank you, Sal, and thank you for having your show, man. I appreciate it, and that's about it, bro. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, uh, buddy. I didn't curse. We, w we will see you soon in sunny Southern California. All right. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, and for Josh Acosta, we will see you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. So until then, so long, everyone. the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com.